most visual input to the brain is a direct result of self-motion. Movements of the body, head or eyes for example, directly result in visual flow feedback and do so in a predictable manner. This continuously changing visual input makes it increasingly hard to detect externally moving objects during self-motion, and especially so in geometrically complex environments. In spite of this, we are perfectly capable of detecting moving objects during self-motion, such as people moving around us, but it is still unclear how our brains solve this difficult task. Hello, my name is Pavel Zmas. I'm here at the Frederick Misha Institute for Biomedical Research in Basel, and I would like to tell you about our research into how the mouse primary visual cortex signals deviations from the visual feedback generated by self-motion. One way this could be done is if the brain generates predictions of the sensory consequences of our movements and in this way learns to expect the visual flow resulting from self-motion. A prediction could then be compared to actual sensory input to detect deviations that would be caused by externally moving objects or as a result of unintended or inaccurate movements. This computation, that actual sensory input is continuously compared to a prediction of sensory input, is described by the theory of predictive coping. In order to study this computation in mouse primary visual cortex, we recorded from mice navigating a virtual tunnel. Visual flow in this tunnel was coupled to the locomotion of the mouse. We refer to this as a closed loop configuration. In this paradigm, we use locomotion as a proxy for the prediction of visual flow that we assume is associated with locomotion. Forward locomotion always directly results in diverging visual flow to the back. And this coupling between the movement and the visual feedback is very consistent and therefore predictable. We speculated that this prediction is compared to visual signals in visual cortex. The output of this computation would then be to signal deviations or mismatches between visual input and predictions. And so, our experimental strategy was to record neural activity in response to mismatches between predicted and actual visual flow. To generate these mismatch events, we randomly halted visual flow either full field or only in small parts of the visual field, while the mice were self-generating visual feedback by running in a virtual tunnel. These local flow halts are highlighted with red arrows. Schematically, we can represent the location of all 42 parts of the visual field we probed with local flow holds in this way. We found a subpopulation of neurons that responded to both full field and local holds of visual flow, selectively when the mouse was self-generating visual flow. We refer to these neurons as mismatch neurons. Crucially, when we then probed the responses of these neurons in an open loop configuration, where the mouse passively observed the same visual stimuli we used to probe mismatch responses, these neurons did not respond. The responses of these neurons were confined to small, specific regions of the visual field that we termed the mismatch receptive field. We next looked at the receptive field properties of mismatch neurons and compared these to visual receptive fields. We know that the size of receptive fields of visual neurons in mouse visual cortex is on the order of 10 degrees. When estimating the receptive field size of mismatch neurons, we found that mismatch receptive fields were of similar size. Visual responses are known to be topographically arranged in visual cortex. This is referred to as retinotopy. We found that the topographic organization of mismatch receptive fields closely matched this retinotopic organization. Therefore, both resolution and topographic organization of mismatch signals matches that of visual signals in mouse primary visual cortex. Lastly, we quantified how mismatch neurons respond in an open loop session where visual flow is not coupled to locomotion. We found that mismatch neural responses increased with increasing difference between running speed and visual flow speed. When modeling this, we found that we could describe the responses of mismatch neurons reasonably well with just a combination of two variables, the visual flow speed and the running speed. We obtained the best match to the data when setting the contribution of running speed to be positive, in other words excitatory, and the contribution of visual flow speed to be negative, in other words inhibitory. These analyses show that mismatch responses scale with the difference between predicted and actual visual flow when predicted visual flow exceeds the actual visual flow. In summary, we found neurons in mouse primary visual cortex that topographically integrate visual and motor related inputs to signal deviations from predicted visual flow in local regions of the visual field. In this way, the concepts of predictive coding can be directly integrated 
with the feedflow description of visual processing based on receptive cues. In principle, the local mismatch signals we describe would be ideally suited to detecting moving objects during self-motion. This is still largely an unsolved problem for computer vision, but a task that humans excel at.